Remember, a pushdown automata is a seven-tuple that includes a transition function delta. To find these delta transitions, it's convenient to consider the moves of our pushdown automaton q a x b y derives q prime x gamma y, where the state changes from q to q prime. The first symbol of the string is consumed, and the top symbol of the stack is changed. For example, let's construct a pushdown automaton for the language of balance sets of parentheses, where each right parenthesis is preceded by a left parenthesis. So remember, concrete never hurts. Let's consider an expression that should be accepted, and to verify this is balanced, we would accumulate the open parentheses until we encounter a closed parenthesis, and then each closed parenthesis is going to cancel out the last open parenthesis written. And note that the closed parenthesis must always match the most recent open parenthesis. Now, without committing ourselves to which states we'll end in, we might imagine our moves to be something like the following. We start with our initial state, we have our string, and our empty stack symbol. We'll consume that first open parenthesis, but because we need to keep track that it is an open parenthesis, we'll put it on top of the stack. So our stack now looks like open parenthesis C naught. We'll consume the next symbol of the string and put that onto the stack. And again. And now we come to a closed parenthesis. So that closed parenthesis can balance out the open parenthesis, and so we'll remove both of them. We have another open parenthesis, so that will be dropped onto the top of the stack. And now, closed parenthesis balances open parenthesis, so we'll remove them both. And again, and again. And here our string has been completely consumed, and our stack is empty. Now, since the string has been completely consumed, we've processed the entire string, and since the only way for the stack to be emptied is to match a closed parenthesis with an open parenthesis, then the parentheses must have balanced. So let's see if we can build a transition function delta that performs these steps. So we'll begin in our initial state q0 and empty stack symbol z0, and note that any open parenthesis we read will be put on top of the stack. Note that if the first symbol we read is a closed parenthesis, the expression is invalid and our PDA should crash, so we won't define what happens if the first symbol read is a closed parenthesis. So, if we're in state q0 and we read an open parenthesis, we should put it on top of the stack. While we could change states, note that reading an open parenthesis means that we can't possibly be in an accepting state since the expression can't end with a left parenthesis, so let's stay in our initial state q0. So if we're in state q0 and read an open parenthesis when our stack symbol is z0, we'll add the open parenthesis to the top of the stack, but stay in our state q0. And so delta q0 open parenthesis z0 is q0 open parenthesis z0. Now this means that we could be in state q0 and there might be an open parenthesis on top of the stack. So if that happens our next symbol could be another open parenthesis or it could be a closed parenthesis. If the next symbol is another open parenthesis, we'll add it to the top of the stack. Note that this means the current symbol on the stack, open parenthesis, will be replaced by two open parentheses. The open parenthesis already present stays there, and another open parenthesis will be put on top. And so our transition function will take us from state q0, where we read an open parenthesis, and the top symbol of the stack is also an open parenthesis, and keep us in state q0 
but replace that top symbol of the stack with two parentheses. What if the next symbol of the string is a closed parenthesis? This has to match the most recent open parenthesis, and we can eliminate both by replacing the stack symbol with the empty string. But if we've just matched an opening parenthesis with a closing parenthesis, it's possible we might have a balanced expression. So we should move to an accepting state, which we'll call q1. Consequently, our transition function if you're in state q0, read a closed parenthesis, and the top stack symbol is open parenthesis, we'll be in the accepting state where we've replaced that top stack symbol with the empty string. And we'll need to specify what happens if we have additional inputs from state q1. So there are three possible inputs, open parenthesis, closed parenthesis, and the empty string. And there are two possibilities for the top of the stack, the empty stack symbol Z0, or an open parenthesis. If the input symbol is open parenthesis, we'll add it to the stack, but since a valid string can't end in an open parenthesis, we need to move out of the accepting state, and we'll move back to Q0. And so if we're in state q1 and read an open parenthesis, then whether the stack symbol is the empty stack symbol or an open parenthesis, we'll add it to the stack, but return to state q0. If the input symbol is closed parenthesis and our stack is empty, we'll crash. This corresponds to the case where we have more closed parentheses than open parentheses, and so our string is not valid. And to crash, we do nothing. In other words, we'll leave that transition undefined. If our input symbol is closed parentheses and our stack has an open parenthesis, we'll again replace the top symbol with the empty string, and we could be balanced, so we'll stay in state Q1. And so if we're in state Q1, we read a closed parenthesis, and the top symbol of the stack is open parenthesis, will stay in state Q1 and replace that top stack symbol with the empty string. What if the string is empty? If there's anything left in the stack, we can't stay in our accepting state because we have more open parentheses than closed parentheses. So we need a lambda transition from the accepting state if our stack isn't empty. And since we wouldn't change the stack, the top symbol, open parenthesis, stays open parenthesis. Now, remember, nothing counts. There is one possibility we haven't considered. Remember, the empty string is in our language. So we should also have a lambda transition from our starting state, q0, into the accepting state if the stack is empty. And so this gives us our transition function, delta. And for future reference, it'll be convenient to number these one through however many we have.